Yo, what's going on guys? Welcome to your 10th responsive design tutorial and in this video I'm going to introduce you to responsive images. Alright then guys, so you've already seen during this tutorial playlist a responsive image in action, be it inadvertently. So this is it right here, the banner. And it's responsive because it has in the CSS a width of 100%, which is a relative measurement. So what I'm saying is, whatever the viewport width, I want the main banner image to be 100% of that width. Okay, so if it's this wide, then the image is going to be that wide. If it's this wide, then the image is going to be that wide. So that is already making the image responsive. However, when we scale down images this way, we're losing a lot of the image data for smaller screens. And that's because the image's default size is quite large to suit desktops, which is kind of this big, right? So the image is pretty big. When we view the image on a smaller screen like this, then we're still downloading that large image file, but then squashing it to fit on the smaller screen. So we're essentially downloading a large image for mobiles and small tablets when we only actually need a small one. So this makes loading the images on mobile devices more time consuming and a more data consuming process. So ideally what we wanna do is download large images for large screens, such as desktops, and then smaller images for smaller screens, such as small tablets or mobiles or something like that. Okay, so we're only ever downloading the size that we need. So the whole idea of responsive images is that we provide a multitude of image size options to browsers and devices so that we can choose which image to download based on the viewport size. For example, the viewport is small like this, we'll say to the browser, hey, download this image. If the viewport size is large, we'll say to the browser, hey, download this large image, okay? So there's something we can use which is built into HTML to you know, provide these different options to browsers and that is the picture element. All right then guys, so this is the picture tag or the picture element and it's a relatively new HTML element and essentially what we do is open it up with a picture tag like this and we close it off with the picture tag and then between those tags, what we do is provide a multitude of different source options using the source tags right here and then the fallback image tag when none of these apply. So within the source tag, we first provide a source set attribute and this is just the image that we're going to use for this particular media query if you like. Okay, so what we're saying here is look, the media is max width 480 pixels. So anything which is 480 pixels or smaller, such as mobile devices, then use this source set, the small image. So we're gonna load in that image for small devices, okay? For this one, I've said max width is 768 pixels. So I'm saying, okay, well then, if that's the case, if it's below 768 pixels, but then it has to be above this, right? Then you load in the medium size image. Okay, so that's gonna be for tablets and things like that. And then if it's above this pixel uh, width, then we're gonna just default back to this image tag, which has a source set of big.jpg, so that's gonna load in the big uh, image for desktops. However, there is one slight snag, as there always is in coding, and that is that this HTML element is pretty new and it's not fully supported in all browsers. Okay then, so I've gone ahead to caniuse.com and I've typed in the picture element at the top here and it's brought down which browsers support it and which don't. So everything in red doesn't support it, everything in green does. Now you see all these versions of IE don't support it, Edge 12 doesn't, Safari, uh, iOS Safari, Opera Mini and these older versions of the Android browser all don't support it. So that is a pretty big problem if we want everyone to be able to view these different picture sizes on different devices since that's the whole point, right? So... We're going to have to do a little extra work if we want to use this picture element. Now, we can use what's called a polyfill to allow browsers which don't support this new HTML picture element to support it. Okay, so basically, um, if you've ever used this thing called, uh, I think it's polyfiller or something like that, it's in a little can, you can spray it on your walls to fill in gaps. And uh, it essentially does the same thing. It just fills in the gaps in browsers. So if they don't natively support something, then the polyfill will add in that support so that we can use the new feature in our code, okay? So basically, they're typically just JS libraries which fill in the gaps into browsers. So there's polyfills for all kinds of web features, but the one I wanna show you today is called picturefill. And you can find that at this address right here. I'll leave the link down below. 
and this just allows us to use the picture element in our code. So let's just go to the quick start right here and it says to start using picture fill, download the files above, blah, 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 place this in the head. However, the recommended usage is right here, okay? So you can see we're adding this script first of all, which is a HTML5 shiv, which basically says document.create element and then this picture element. So if the, uh, the browser doesn't recognize this element, then it's gonna create it for it. Then we're adding in the picture fill polyfill JS file and we're saying it's asynchronous so we want it to load as the rest of the page loads so we're going to pop that into the head of our document so I'm going to copy it now come over to our code and let's paste it right there like that and just shimmy this along a little bit all right but the only problem is oops that uh, we don't have this picturefill.js file in our uh, files or folders there. So what we need to do is just link to a hosted version or download it here. I'm going to link to the hosted version and you can find that right here, picture fill. There we go. You can either download the development version or the production version. I'm just going to go with the development version for now. You can see this is a content delivery network. So I'm just going to grab that URL and I'm going to paste it into this source attribute right there. All right. So now we've got that set up. Now we can use the picture tag within our document. So I've already uh, written out the HTML for that. I'm just gonna copy it. I'm gonna paste it down here so you don't have to watch me um, write it all out. So what I'm doing is just go into the main banner and I'm gonna replace this current image there, which is the banner image with the picture element. So I'll just paste it in and you can see I've got the picture tag right there and then close it off right there. Then I've got these different sources uh, the first one is saying with a max width of 480 pixels. So that's for small um, devices such as mobiles. And I'm going to load in the small image. And then for the second one, this is the second source um, tag. And it's got a source set attribute of medium banner. And this is for a max width of 768 pixels. And then finally, if it's bigger than this, then it's just gonna download the desktop banner, which is just banner.js, which is the original one that we had. Now, I've already created these three banners in Photoshop. I'll just quickly show you these things. You can see this is the original large one. Uh, this is the medium one we're gonna load in for um, like tablets and things like that. And then this is the small one. And what I've done is just put a little L for large, M for medium, and S for small on the different banners. So when we test it in the browser, you can see what's going on. Okay, so, that's all the HTML that we need. So I'm going to save that right there. And then I'm going to pop back to our website. I'm going to refresh. And now if we look in the source, let's go to the elements and down to the main banner. You can see now we've got the picture element and these different source tags and then this image tag to fall back on. Now it's currently falling back on this image one right here, this uh, main banner. And that's because none of these filters here, max width 768 or max width 480, have been reached yet because we're quite big, the uh, the uh, viewport size. So it's showing the large banner. You can see that with the M. But when we go down to, what is it, 768 pixels, we'll do that now. You can view the size up here. So nearly there now, 768, let's get there. Okay, now we've loaded in the medium banner. Okay, so if someone loaded the web page on this size viewport, it would just download this one and not this. So therefore, it's going to download quicker because it's a smaller file and you're not going to waste any data on your big image. Pretty cool, right? And same again, if we take it down to 480 pixels, we're going to load in that small one. There we go. However, because of those styles that we applied in one of the previous tutorials, there we're stretching the image. We'll just get rid of those styles right now. If we inspect and go to this rule, it's this thing right here, making the width 180 pixel, uh, percent and then scooting it off to the left. So let's delete that. Now we can see this is the small banner. All right, so that is responsive images in a nutshell. It's a pretty cool little technique and it's, uh, it's good for not wasting data or download time on smaller devices, okay? So if you have any questions whatsoever, feel free to leave a comment down below. Otherwise, guys, I'll see you in the very next video where we're going to take a look at frameworks. I'll see you guys then.